I've been on a journey learning how to make game art. I'm not an artist, I'm a programmer, which means that for once I actually get a leg up. I understand shaders, or at least the programming side of it. I'm gonna make a full shaders episode some point down the line, it might end up being two hours long. Today, I just wanna try my hand at making water. I'm gonna handle large, mostly static bodies of water today. So those are things like the ocean, lakes, and ponds. There are solutions for rivers. In Godot, there's a plugin called Waterways, which I've just never been able to get set up correctly. In Unity, there is an asset called River Auto Material, I think it is, by Nature Manufacturer. It's a paid asset though, so make of that what you will. Also, I'm gonna be using Godot for this video, which means that there are a million different tutorials doing exactly what I wanna do. They're just all on a different version. Version. All right, like usual, I started with some assets from Kenny. I got the nature kit and the pirate kit. I wanted to build an island in the middle of the ocean, something with a small waterfall and a river and a little tiny pond, as well as a tower and a shipwreck. I added a ship in the water, which follows a path around the island. Thank God there is a built-in node for this in Godot. Total lifesaver. As far as the look goes, the nature kit does have a water material built in, which fits with the rest of the color scheme of that asset pack but it's static it just doesn't feel alive so i replaced that water material with a shader material and that is what we're going to use to make the water okay so i followed a bunch of tutorials i got just about as much of the rust i could off of my shader programming knowledge i actually took a class in college on graphics and shader programming you're probably not going to believe that statement given the events later in the video i just I could not get the shader working to save my life. I can make the water blue. I can make it reflect the world around it. I can even add some normal maps and move them around the surface so it doesn't look static. I can add waves in the vertex shader, but I tried to add depth occlusion and edge ripples and I just could not do it. So why is it not working? Well, for one, I'm actually not that good of a programmer, let alone a shader programmer. And two, the tutorial I was following is for the Godot 4 beta, and I'm in Godot 4.3, so there's been a couple versions between then and now. In the then and now time, they changed how you reference the depth texture when writing a shader, and how you interpret the values that you get from that texture. So this is an issue that I've run into a lot with Godot, which is that Godot has changed a lot in recent history, and so a lot of tutorials, even from two years ago, just don't work anymore because newer versions have come out and changed things that those tutorials use. This isn't a problem that is exclusive to Godot. This is very much a problem with Unity and Unreal. I don't know how to translate the code from the beta version shader to the current version to get depth working. The code just makes the surface white. My graphics professor in college actually said something that was kind of funny, which is that the one good thing about shader programming is that when you fuck up, you can see it. And there is clearly a problem here. So I return the shader back to a working state and that is what I am going to use for the pond and the little river on the island. I tried to debug this for a while, but at some point you just want to compare notes. So I went on to GodotShaders.com and I found a bunch of other water shaders. Obviously, not every shader on the website is going to be for the same version that I'm using, hence the issue that I've already run into. I was able to find a few. I found a Toon shader, which is effectively just the water from Wind Waker. I found one called Absorption Based Water, which works pretty well. And then I found one called Stylized Water, which fits the low poly art of the scene pretty well. It's pretty basic and simple, but it just fits. Eventually, I stumbled upon this tutorial. It was for the visual shader graph, which is a lot closer to what I used in Unity, and I feel a lot more comfortable with it, just because you can see every possible output and the list of any possible node that you can use. In a text shader, you can use everything, but without researching properties, you kind of just have to stumble upon things. With this visual shader tutorial, I got the water looking pretty good. It has normal maps, surface noise, which is the white parts, a vertex shader, which handles waves, and edge ripples, which is something I could not get with the first one. It looks pretty good. I still could not get depth occlusion working. I tried, I just, I couldn't. I decided to move on, and this is the water that I'm going to use to surround the island. This is gonna be the ocean water. So one thing I feel is often overlooked with art in games, but very specifically water shaders, is something that honestly doesn't have anything to do with the look at all. It's interaction. It doesn't matter how cool the water looks, if you try and drop a box into it and it doesn't float back up, 
it doesn't seem like water anymore. Like if I dropped a crate into the water, it should float, right? I was able to get objects to be buoyant, but I couldn't get the math just right to approximate the height of the waves correctly. Like there's definitely a way to do it. I just need to check and double check my math. It works okay with a boat. I have it set up so that it checks multiple locations and applies buoyant forces in those multiple locations, but it's still super janky. I'm gonna write that off as a bug and not a feature. Let's just say it's like totally accurate ship simulator. Yeah. So it still doesn't work perfectly, but did we at least learn something? Yeah. I think I can tell you what makes a water simulation convincing, at least in a real time environment. Water needs to be transparent. You need to be able to see through it. It also needs to be able to reflect light that hits it. You can do this by setting the roughness value in the shader pretty low. That's almost the easiest part of this entire thing. The surface can be static, but it looks a lot better when the surface texture moves around. That's what they did for Minecraft. And if it works for Minecraft, it'll work for you. You can add waves with either an extreme normal map or a vertex shader should the water that you want have waves ripples around the edges of objects now the ripples aren't always super realistic but for some reason not having them feels weirder than having them and the water should interact with the world so this is in part the ripples around the edges of objects but also buoyancy and footstep splashes something that i didn't add at all they're things that you don't necessarily notice when they are there but when they're not there your brain sort of just can tell that something is wrong oh and it also helps if the style of the water meaning that the textures and the colors that you have chosen fit with everything else in your scene i think that the stylized water which ironically is the simplest looking of the shaders that i found fits best with this world because it's a solid color as long as i can set the color to make it fit with the rest of the world it has pretty much everything that i need so how could i take this further obviously i can fix the depth occlusion and the buoyancy code but i can also make the shader use world space instead of uv space that way if you have multiple objects next to each other the waves on them would line up so you don't have to have one big object covering everything you can have holes in that object. Also, often water shaders have a Fresnel, Fresnel effect? I don't know how to say that. Which is a color on the water where light would be reflecting off of the water more than it's refracting through the water. Also, refraction would be a nice thing to add. Man, my posture has gotten so bad. All right, that's pretty much it for today. If you wanna see some more successful shaders that I've used in games, check out this video where I added grenades to my knockback arena shooter. With that, I'll see you next time. Peace.